Okay. So if you're anything like my family, you probably have a PC or two laying around the house that's not being used. And this may be for the reason that it's too slow or you wanted to sell it, but the price depreciated so much that you can't. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn any PC into a modern day gameable PC. And also you can sell it, you can do anything what you want with it, you can um, eat it if you're into that. Personally, I'm not, so, uh, yeah. So you may be asking, what kind of computer am I going to be upgrading? And my answer to that, ladies and gentlemen, is... Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Oh. The Dell XPS Studio. Okay, hold up. The Dell XPS Studio 9100. So upon editing this video, uh, I'm currently editing right now. I realized that I never went over the parts of the the computer before I upgraded it. So uh, what it has is a Intel Core i7 920, uh, first gen. It's a quad core processor clocked at 2.67 gigahertz. Then it has 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM, uh, uh, I believe one terabyte, uh, uh, one terabyte hard drive. That's uh, 5400 RPM hard drive, and uh, a GT710, and then it has a 520 watt power supply. That I tested, it works. It works good. So yeah, subscribe. Now the Dell XPS Studio 9100 was essentially like a high-end pre-built gaming PC back in 2010-ish, and as you can see right here, it's running window. It ran Windows 7. I uh, uh, this used to be actually my PC, so uh, I and you may recognize it from the RG Rig reboot I did on this guy. So, but uh, I ha I obviously changed it to Windows 10. I upgraded it and uh, yeah, but that just shows how old this PC is and how you can change any PC into a somewhat gameable PC. Now you may be asking, I couldn't find a Dell XPS Studio 9100. Well, uh, what I'm going to be telling you today can apply to anything like a uh, Dell Optiplex, like one of those small skinny ones that you can find at school or something, uh, like a, uh, another bigger Dell Optiplex. Or another old pre-built PC that uh, you have just make sure that it has a PCIe slot and it supports your graphics card before uh, you do that so this is my part selection now inside this Dell XPS studio 9100 is a is two 5400 rpm hard drives now you probably know that hard drives are not the most what can I say, uh, fastest uh, form of storage on the market, let alone a 5400 RPM drive, but uh, I'm going to be upgrading those into this, which is the Silicon Power 256 gig SATA 3 SSD. Now SSDs are faster because they don't have any moving parts, so the data is constantly spinning in a hard drive and it tries to access it, whereas on a solid state drive, it's a pretty much a direct path to the data. So that is why a solid state's always faster. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing to this PC is adding new thermal paste. So this is Arctic MX4. And this is actually a really, really good thermal paste that a lot of people use. And it's actually very well known. This is what I use in my personal system. And this is what I'm gonna be doing using in this system. Now, the current thermal paste is about 10 years old. So I thought, why not? The graphics card currently, I upgraded actually to a GT710. Now, I upgraded it when I didn't really know a lot about computers, so I thought the GT710 was actually good, but I then quickly found out that it was bad. Like, really, really bad. And if you have a GT710 and you feel that a GT710 is a great graphics card, have at it and uh, I won't judge you. 
that much. And speaking of graphics cards, I'm going to be putting... Oh my god, okay. A uh, GeForce GTX 1060 6GB variant. This is the ASUS o uh, OC dual model, uh, dual fan model, so it's... It, is already came came factory overclocked, so which is pretty good. And if you if you if, it, if you think it looks kind of weird here, it's because I had to pull off a shipping label, and shipping labels are kind of annoying to pull off, and so that's what happened. And yes, this is actually is a better graphics card than what's in my system. I have the 1066 three gig variant, which uh, is still good uh, for what I have what I need, but. Today, I'm going to be putting a GTX 1060 6GB variant because I got a killer deal on it. I got this for only t uh, uh, $130, which is fire. So, at this moment, I'm going to be teaching you how to build it. So, the first thing I would recommend you do is uh, clear your area. And then, once you do that, flip your PC on the side. And once you did that, as you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble. I would just pop the side panel out. I'm still having a bit of trouble. But you know what? I got there eventually. Uh, so just pop the side panel out and you'll see now see the computer. So here's just a tip. Clear, clean the computer with canned air before you uh, work on it. Because and if you don't know what canned air is, I'll put up a picture. But uh, canned air just would just make it less dusty and uh, more better and it could also help the temperature and performance so yeah so you're probably confused on where you're looking at so i'm just going to give you a quick rundown so uh that that's the graphics card that's the cpu cooler yours probably might look different and all, in fact all your parts might look different but same general idea so underneath the cpu cooler is the processor itself the cpu is the processor if you didn't know what the cpu is and then um that's the ram and, uh, you might have less sticks than I do, but you probably still understand what RAM is. Uh, and then um, that's the hard drive. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is removing the graphics card. As you can see, I'm pulling down these two blue things, and that is lifting the part where it, the graphics card is being held into. Uh, for you, it could be screws. Uh, these are called the PCIe covers. Uh, so... As you can see, uh, there's the graphics card. You can see a better angle. And what you just want to do is apply gentle pressure to just pull it out. And just wiggle it out of there. And see, as you can see, it's out. So now I'm going to be showing you how to replace the thermal paste of the CPU. So what thermal paste does, it essentially sits between the cooler and your CPU. So that it'll help with thermal conductivity and you'll be getting the right ideal CPU temperatures. So, what you first have to do is unplug the CPU fan header labeled CPU underscore fan. This is usually at the top right of your motherboard, and this is what powers your CPU cooler. So, once you did that, you're going to unscrew the four screws going around the cooler. You can use a screwdriver, or you can use an electric screwdriver. So once you did that, you're going to remove uh, the CPU cooler by just pulling it off and wiping off the existing thermal paste on the CPU and the cooler. With You can do this by getting some uh, toilet paper or coffee filters and putting some isopropyl alcohol on it and just wiping it off. I would do this on the CPU and the CPU cooler. So when you're doing it on the CPU, I would recommend taking the CPU out of the socket so that you don't get alcohol all over your computer. So then put it back in your socket. And then once you did that, you can apply your thermal paste. Now there are many ways to apply thermal paste. The most common one is the PDOT method where you put a, mm, a glob in the middle of your CPU. It should be the size of a P. That's why it's called the P dot. And you put that in the middle of your CPU. Then you can apply your cooler again by screwing it in and placing it in the middle of it, obviously. And then you when, you, when you screw it in, I would recommend screwing it in an X format, meaning you screw one in and then you do the one diagonal to that one and then 
so on and so forth. It'll be like an X. Uh, so once you do that, you can plug your ca uh, cable back into the CPU fan header, and you're good to go. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing is replacing the hard drives. Now, the hard drives are very simple. All you have to do is unplug the two wires that are plugged into it. And once you do that, you can unscrew the two. It's usually either two or four screws that are holding the hard drives into place. For me, it was two. So, unscrew the two uh, screws that are holding the drives into place. And just pull them out. Now, you could have more drives than me or you could have less that drives than me for this system it had two for you you could just have one so i'm going to be replacing both drives so what you have to do is bring in your new drive that you're placing for me it's an ssd and you just plug both wires that came out of the hard drives into the ssd now this system doesn't have a ssd tray or a mount so what i just am going to do i didn't show it here but i'm just going to I did uh, just double side tape the uh, SSD to uh, wherever you want to put it. Um, this is actually very safe because the SSD doesn't have any moving parts, so it won't damage it. And um, in my opinion, it's a lot more convenient than screws. And now it's on to the graphics card. So, like I said, I'm going to be doing the graphics card. So, here's a little unboxing for you guys. Oh yeah. Okay, so like I said, I got an absolute killer deal on this graphics card. It's a six gigabyte variant of a GTX 1060. Wow, bro. Like, people should start making more white graphics cards. Now, I'm gonna be showing you how to install the graphics card. So you're gonna be installing into this green slot right here. It might be a different color for you, but generally it's just the first PCIe slot. So what you're gonna do is make sure that uh there's room like there's no cables in the way and once that happens you can uh, hold a graphics card like i am right now on the screen and just apply this line it up on both sides and just apply gentle pressure inwards and once you do that you can lock the graphics card into place by the, with the screws that you use to take off the PCIe covers or with this weird mechanic that this PC has which you just push so the next thing you're going to be doing is powering a graphics card so what I want you to grab the six pin gra uh, connector and just plug it into the graphics card if you don't know what a six pin connector is I'll put a picture on the screen but you just want to grab it and just plug it in at the port uh, that in, in your graphics card uh, if you don't have that port then you don't have to worry about this part portion but just keep that in mind and now finally, and now finally let's okay oh my that's unfortunate please excuse my cable management right now uh, I tried okay uh, it, it, it doesn't normally look like this you already saw my set of video uh, let us see if this turns on and boots that's a good sign the fans are running. You put us in the BIOS, put us in the BIOS. Let's go! And now, as you can see, this computer works. Now, uh, anyways, that'll be the end of the video. Uh, I still don't know if I'm in focus or not, but hopefully I am. Uh, anyways, if you liked the video, press the like button. If you disliked the video, press the like button. If you hated the video, still press the like button and subscribe and share and then comment and, uh, yeah, it works. Anyways, bye.